I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on vectors. We'll talk about equilibrium forces with the help of two examples in this particular video. Question number one here is, a 10 kg block lies on a smooth ramp that is inclined at 30 degrees. What force parallel to the ramp would prevent the block from moving? So the situation is kind of like this. Here we have a ramp which is at an angle of 30 degrees. And let us say we have a block somewhere on this ramp. We are given mass of the block. Now it's very important to understand the units, right? We say a 10 kg block, that means the mass is 10 kg, right? Now, whenever there is a mass, we need to convert that to force. We know F equals to MA, right? So that is the relation which converts. So we need to multiply this by 9.8 to get the force in Newtons. Now, you have to be very careful at this stage. Sometimes in the equations, they will write kg weight. If they write kg weight, it means same as force, right? Okay. Now, the question is, what force parallel to the ramp would prevent the block from moving? So, when we are looking for a force which is going to be preventing the motion, we call this as a equilibrate force, right? Now, this block here will actually move because of what? Because of its weight, right? So, the weight actually is acting downwards. So, this is the weight which is acting downwards. Uh, let me call this as mg. Now this weight can be resolved into two components. One, along this surface, because we want the movement along this surface. That is why we resolve it along this surface. Right? The other will be perpendicular to it. Do you see those two components? So, you will realize that in this particular diagram, here we have 90 degrees, right? So, so this particular angle here is going to be 30 degrees, right? And this angle, which makes with the force and this direction will be 60 degrees, right? So this is your 30 degrees angle. The force which we are saying normal to the plane is actually not helping you to move the block downwards. The force which helps you to move downwards is mg sine theta. In this case, theta is 30 degrees. So this force is helping you to move the block downwards. When we say what force applied to the ram would prevent the block from moving, that means, and that to along the ram, right? So we need to find a force which will prevent it from moving. That means the force will be same as the force applied by the block. Perfect, but in the opposite direction, correct? So we'll calculate the force as force which is helping it to move. We call that as a resultant force, right? So resultant force here is mg sine theta. So in our case, we have 10, that is the mass, 9.8, and then sine of 30 degrees, correct? So that is the force. Now sine of 90 degrees, 30 degrees is half, so five times 9.8. You can always use the calculator to find the answer. 10 times 9.8 times sine of 30 degrees, right? So that gives you 49. So 49 units of Newtons, is the force which is acting along this inclined plane in this direction. So the force applied to prevent it, so to prevent what we need to do. To prevent will apply the force in the opposite direction, but the magnitude will be 49 newtons itself, right? So, but up the incline. Correct? So this force is also called equilibrant force. 
So basically, equilibrate force helps you to keep the objects in equilibrium and it always acts in opposite direction to the resultant force. Right? So what we calculated here was a resultant force. So directly opposite to this resultant force will be your equilibrium. Perfect. So I hope that is clear. Now in the second question, let us see how to do this in three dimensions. The question here is, three forces, five newtons, eight newtons, and 10 newtons act from the corner of a rectangular solid along the edges. Calculate the magnitude of the equilibrium of these three forces. Determine the angle that the equilibrium makes with each of the three forces. So let's try to sketch and then understand the situation. Let's say that is our solid block. The three forces acting are along X, Y and Z direction. Okay. So let us say, uh, let me sketch the forces now. So five newtons, let's say this is our five newtons. And then we have eight and 10. So these forces now can be written as, let me write down here, the net force is combination of all three of them. Now this is 5, this is 8, and that is 10, right? So we correct this as 5i plus 8j plus 10k, where i, j, k are unit vectors along x, y, and z. Now, when they say calculate the magnitude of equilibrate, so let's find the magnitude of resultant first, right? So the resultant magnitude is going to be square root of 5 square plus 8 square plus 10 square, correct? So that gives you, let's calculate how much. So within square root, we have 5 square plus 8 square plus 10 square. And that is equal to, uh, okay, so it gives you 3 square root 21. In decimals, it is equal to 13.7477. So let me write 13.75 newtons. Right? So that is your force acting on this, right? So let us say we represent this force with something like this kind of. That is a resultant force in R3. Now, we need to calculate the magnitude of the equilibrium. So when we say equilibrate, so equilibrate force makes it, so when we say equilibrium, it means it is same in magnitude. So it is equal to resultant force. but opposite in direction, right? The idea here is that will keep it in equilibrium. So the idea is this force, so this keeps in equilibrium. So you get the concept. So these three forces will try to move the object along this side, but our force which we are calling as the equilibrium force will keep it at the at the stop at the spot without moving so it is going to act in the opposite direction well this is not very accurate it's 3d so whatever you sketch here it cannot really be so accurate right so think like this so but the magnitude is going to be seen so this magnitude let us say force of equilibrium is for us same as 3 square root 21 or you can say 13.75 newtons. Is that clear to you? So that is how we are going to find this answer. Now part B is determine the angle that the equilibrium makes with each of the three forces. Now in our diagram, we'll actually find the angle for the given force and 180 minus that will be the angle for the equilibrium forces, right? So let's do it on the new page. 
So uh, let me sketch it again here uh, and then we'll figure it out. Okay, so what we had got is something like this. The three forces, 5, 8 and 10 Newtons. And let's say we had some force this time. Let me just sketch like this, right? And the equilibrate force which you learned just now should be acting right opposite to it and it has the same magnitude. That is what we have. So what we'll now do is we'll find the angle which this force makes with x, y and z axis. Right? You get the idea? So we'll find the angle which this makes with the x axis. Right? Maybe let me extend like this. So whichever it makes with the x axis which it makes with the y-axis and which it makes with the z-axis, right? So let me say this angle, okay. So these three angles is what we will find. So let's first find the angles. We call them, see, these are the axes, x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. So we are trying to find the angle for our force with x y and z axis that means we are trying to find direction cosines right so we are finding direction cosines is that clear so you can use the direction cosine formula to find this the formula as such is cos of alpha the angle which the force makes with x axis is equal to uh, a1 over square root of a1 square plus A2 square plus A3 square, right? Similarly, you have cos of beta equals to A2 over magnitude of A1 square plus A2 square plus A3 square and cos of gamma equals to A3 over square root of A1 square plus A2 square plus a3 square now basically it is where where the uh, where the vector a let me say where where the vector a is basically a1 a2 a3 clear in that case this is the formula so what we have already got here is our force and the force is 5 i plus 8j plus 10k and we also know that its magnitude is 3 square root 21 we just found is it okay now if i use the unit vector you can see here in that case cos alpha cos beta and cos gamma could be treated as cos inverse of 5 over this right so this is a shortcut method so that is why i'm trying to explain you the concept and then we'll apply it so from here we can find that alpha will be cos inverse of what? 5 over 3 square root 21. Does it make sense to you? This is the magnitude. We already divided by the magnitude, correct? A1, the component, which is coefficient of i, right? That component along i. And beta will be equals to cos inverse of 8 over 3 square root 21. And gamma will be cos inverse of 10 over 3 square root 21. Does it make sense to you, right? So we just need to calculate these values. And that is why I'm working with force first, right? So at times, we may have to find the angle which the resultant makes. This is the resultant, right? Then we'll work with the equilibrium, right? So let's use the calculator to find the values. So we're doing cos inverse of 5 divided by, well, that was uh, how much magnitude? 13.75. So we're using 13.75, right? Since we just calculated that the force, the magnitude of this force, resultant force was 3 square root 21 newtons or it is 13.75. So we'll use the decimal number 13.75 equals to cos inverse. That gives us the angle and the angle here is 
68.67 i'll round it to 7 degrees now we'll change 5 to 8 in this right and calculate the answer well this is a fast way of doing it right 54.4 degrees and then we'll change this angle to 10 you should know all these tricks right to save time especially in the test time is critical let's write just 43.3 degrees so what we worked out here is the angle which the resultant makes now let's talk about the equilibrant so the equilibrant angles will be what so equilibrant angles with let's call them angle as let's say theta with the five force right so which is along the i direction so which is this angle will be how much it will be right opposite do you see it is 180 minus that so it is going to be 180 degrees minus 68.7 correct so we'll do this now so we'll do 180 minus 68.7 to get our answer which is 111.3 do you get the idea? So the second force is against the force of 8 newtons, which is along the J direction, right? Will be 180 degrees minus beta, which is 54.4. So let's figure this out. 180 minus 54.4 equals to, in decimals, 125.6. And the third force, which is for 10 in the k direction, will be 180 degrees minus 43.3. Okay. So that is 180 minus 43.3. In decimals, 136.7. So these are our answers for the equilibrium. So the answers are 136.7, 125.6, and 111.3. Does make sense to you? So that is how we are going to calculate this answer. So I hope all these steps are absolutely clear. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, it'll be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.